Creating an Excel pivot table profit and loss statement is surprisingly easy. And because it's a pivot table, you can team it with slices to make it interactive. And while you're at it, you might as well add some conditional formatting to make reading what is usually a drab report at least quick and easy. Let's have a look. This is the data I'll be using. Notice it's already in a tabular layout and each account is classified into an account group and these account groups represent the different sections of a profit and loss statement. Now I've also got regional and financial year columns that I can use in slices to filter my P&L. And in this case I have actual and budget data but you might only have actuals. All right, let's insert a pivot table. I'm going to pop it on this sheet here called PL and we'll put it in cell B3. So I want my account group and account in the row labels and the actual and budget in the values areas. Let's apply some number formatting. These are currency values and no decimal places. And we'll do the same for this one, currency with no decimal places. Now the revenue accounts should be listed above cost of goods sold. So I'm just going to hover my mouse until it displays the four headed arrow and then left click and drag it into place. I'm also going to right click and remove the grand total. Now profit and loss also have subtotals for gross profit and net profit. And we can add those using calculated items. I want the calculated items at the account group level. So I need to select any of the row labels at the account group level. And then on the pivot table analyze tab, I'm going to go fields, items and sets, calculated item. We give our calculated item a name. The first one will be gross profit. And the formula is simply revenue, double click to add it, minus cost of goods sold. And I'll click add. And then let's add one for net profit. This one's going to be made up of gross profit minus expenses. And I'll click add and OK. Now you can see they've been added to my pivot table, but we also have all these accounts underneath them. So I'm just going to collapse these two so that we can't see the underlying accounts. And I need to also move gross profit up underneath cost of goods sold. All right, let's do some formatting. I don't want to see the expand and collapse buttons and I don't want the field header. That's this row labels here. So let's turn that off. We'll get rid of sum of before actual and budget. Now I need to leave a space before actual to differentiate this label from the actual field in the field list. And I need to do the same for budget. So we're just going to leave a space. You can't even tell the space is there. Let's right align those labels and back on the design tab. I want to have the subtotals at the bottom of the groups and I want to add a blank line after each item just to make it look more like a traditional profit and loss report. Now I'm just going to give the columns a bit more space and I want to make sure that this pivot table isn't going to resize when we refresh it or use slices. So I'm going to right click and go into pivot table options. I'm going to remove auto fit column widths on update and make sure preserve cell formatting on update is checked. It should be by default, but best to check anyway. And I'll click OK. The last thing I want to do is remove the default styling that the pivot table has. So on the design tab in the pivot table styles, you can choose this one here that's none. If you look at the P&L, you can see there are still lines in it. So I've created my own custom style that has absolutely no formatting and you can create your own custom style by right clicking on one that's close to what you want and then choosing duplicate and then you can go ahead and modify the settings in there. I've already done that here. So we're going to apply the no formatting style. Let's add some borders. We'll repeat the same for this one and the expenses. Gross profit can have a top and bottom border and net profit can have the double bottom border. Now, if you have actual and budget like I do, then you'll probably want to display the variance. And we can do that on the analyze tab by adding a calculated field. Call this one variance. And the formula is simply actual minus budget. 
click add. While I'm here, I'm going to add a percentage variance and that's just actual divided by budget minus one. Click add and okay. And you can see they're automatically added to the pivot table. Let's get rid of some of like we did with the other labels. And we'll add a space. We'll format this as a percentage with one decimal place. And there you have a pivot table profit and loss. Now profit and loss statements make for dry reading, but we can make it quicker for our audience to interpret with the help of some conditional formatting to visually indicate whether the variance is positive or negative using traffic lights. Now positive income variances are good, but the opposite is true for expense variances. So we need two conditional formatting rules. I'll start by setting one up for the income items. So revenue, gross profit and net profit. And then on the home tab, conditional formatting, icon sets, and I'm just going to go with this one here. We'll repeat that for the cost of goods sold and the expenses. Now I need to modify the rules. So in conditional formatting, manage rules. This one here is for the expense lines. I'm going to double click to open the edit formatting rule dialog box. Here I want to reverse the icon order. Remember negative variances here are good because this is expenses. I want to change this to number and this one to number. So when a value is greater than or equal to zero, it's going to be a negative variance for the expense. When it's less than zero and greater than or equal to zero, then it's going to be neutral and that's highly unlikely. And when it's less than zero, then that's good. So I'll click OK. We need to make a change here to change this to number and likewise here. I don't want to reverse the icon order though. It's correct as it is. So I'll click OK and OK. Now we can see that negative variances for revenue are displayed with a red indicator, whereas for expenses, they're green. Now, if your source data has fields that you'd like to filter your profit and loss by, like I do here with region and financial year, then we can do that with slices. So let's insert some slices. I'll have one for region and financial year and I'll just bring them over here and we'll squeeze them into this space. Let's move that one down and we'll make them a bit smaller. I don't want to spend too much time formatting the slices. I think you get the idea of that, but we'll make them gray. And now when I select a region in my slicer, you can see the pivot table automatically updates as does all the conditional formatting. I can show all regions if I want. Likewise, if I select a financial year, it all updates accordingly. So there you have pivot table profit and loss with conditional formatting to give visual indication of the performance and slices to give that interactivity and allow the user to select what region or financial year that they want to display. I hope you found this technique useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here or the video description. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.